Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have, of course, another watch me work on this cute yellow boa inspired chrome look. This look was actually partly inspired by Clawsom Nails, I believe, on Instagram. They do press on nails. Um, we took a little inspiration, changed it up a little bit, but I do want to give credit to, you know, artists, up and coming people. So this print also is actually part of the inspiration this ye actual yellow boa constrictor <laughs> um it's skin and this is the look we came with now it's supposed to look a little wet instead of looking like scales that was the decision my client made i think it still came out cute and you're you know free to do art how you please now this is a little fun video with tidbits of information and so pause the video down below Put what you would pay or what you think I charged. Or if you're a nail tech, what would you charge for this set? Pause, put it down below, and somewhere in the video, you'll get the information and see if you're right. You know what I'm going to say now. To know where we're going, we have to see where we came from. So this is my client's previous set when it was freshly done. I'm sure you remember this set. If not, scroll back a few videos and watch it. You'll see how I executed that whole look. Now, this is that same set after, I believe, four or five weeks. It wore beautifully. She did actually accidentally break the tip off of this actual nail I'm filing right now. And it was at the tip, and you'll see how I filed it the um product away that's exactly how she cracked it she just um nail took some nail glue from like 7-eleven or something and glued it back together which is absolutely fine it worked for her she hit it really hard um vacuuming her car or something like that whatever it happened it happens so i um actually made the decision to leave her natural nail and just file it again the shape of the actual crack and get all that off and i'm just going to sculpt out the remaining tip of that now um as you may know if you watched the previous video of this set of nails one of her hands specifically this hand is made of poly gel and the other hand is builder gel i made the decision actually last time i did her nails that I did want to transition this hand over to Builder Gel as well. So what I'm doing is filing the product low on where her nail bed, her nail plate is, and a little bit thinner towards the free edge area. The reason I did that is because I didn't want to take it completely 100% down because of laziness. Um, but as her nails grow, we'll cut the free edge down, and eventually that poly gel will grow longer and get cut down and cut off. So the way I did it, the nails looked like the cosmetic pink builder gel that I wanted it to look. And that just is useful for future situations. Um, if she wanted the same color, the option to have the same nude on both of them. I, there's a story on how she got on two different products. It's absolutely fine. It was just something we had did in the past and it just followed us <laughs> through the whole set for months and months and months. So I'm taking the one that cracked all the way down. I'm taking like basically like 97.3% of the product off of the nail, basically all the way down. And um, I'm using this coarse bit from Poochie's Nails and I'm using it on the highest speed. And I'm using my Medicool Pro Power 20K e-file to take that down. So now I'm going in with my skiver bit and that's from Atwood Industries and I'm going on a very low speed. And I'm holding the bit flush to the natural nail, not at an angle, so as parallel to the nail plate as possible as to not cause any rings of fire or indentations in the natural nail. And this does look aggressive, but this video is sped up, so a lot of things will look, you know, more aggressive or a tad bit different than they would if, you know, I'm going slow in real life because I am a slow nail tech. That's just what I am. So I'm just getting all that cuticle off the nail plate. And um, I've said this before, but you can actually go in forward and reverse on your e-file. So from going from right to left, and you can switch your e-file in reverse 
Um, and then it will go from left to right. If you are left handed, you um, probably use your e file in reverse. So, I mean, the same applies. You can go in what's reversed to you. So, both ways, no matter which hand you are. And you're able to hit different angles of the nail, um, different, you know, kind of pockets in the sidewalls if there's, you know, a lot of dead skin in those areas. So as you can see, I'm actually using this round bit from Atwood Industries, and I generally like using it from left to right. So I have it in reverse now, and you can see I'm working from the left side of her hand over to the right instead of, you know, with the skiver bit, I was going from right to left. And again, with this bit, you know, if I want, if there's a piece of skin that won't come off, I can, you know, turn my drill off and switch directions and you know just go back and forth and work that skin off again this is a very low speed and you can see how i'm just um buffing that dry skin away you can see that little piece of skin come off and all that just get you know buffed down so we don't have to really clip or cut anything we're just getting it smoothed down so i'm using a nail plate nail plate nail mate <laughs> um, nail form from glitter planet i just pinched the tip of the um, form already so I could just fit it under the nail very easily and now I'm going to get it as flush with her natural nail that's already existing as possible so I'm just pinching it from the bottom and I'm getting it tight on her actual finger until it sits exactly where I want to and it's not moving and it's flush with the underside of the free edge of her natural nail so I'm going to go in with my clear rubber base. That's gonna be the base for everything I use today. And I'm going to apply that to the entirety of the nail. I could have probably just left it at the bottom third of the nail because I went in and um, kind of reshaped the product that I put before rebuilding the nail. So I'm actually going to be using poly gel, but I'm using it in a sheer pink color to build out the extension. And I'm holding it to the nail next to the nail um next to it just to kind of get an idea of the length and where i need to stop and so i'm using that poly gel i'm manipulating it with 70 percent alcohol and i'm just going to be building out this little tip again and i'm just pushing this product how i want this product does not cure or dry or run and so it's actually very very perfect for sculpting if you're somebody uncomfortable with sculpting poly gel is perfect it doesn't run because it's not completely gel it doesn't dry because it's not acrylic so you can play with this for the next three hours and pat 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 and get it as perfect as you want it's great but i also like it because it is that hybrid of gel and acrylic so it's great for sculpting so i flash cured in the light for a few seconds literally all it takes is like three to five seconds pulled it out and you can see me pinching it just to get a you know nice c curve and get it you know tight and conform to the nail and get some strength going a good c curve maybe good strength her natural nails obviously don't have a c curve i get people who ask that why don't you have a c curve because they're her natural nails and they naturally don't have a c curve okay just make it make it make sense for you <laughs> Um, so I wanted to file this little extension right now before I built product over it because I didn't want it to be too thick or stand out because I am going to be putting that cover pink over this product. And so I just wanted to file it into shape also so it wasn't bulky so I'm not applying excess of product. So I went ahead and wiped that nail off with alcohol, got the dust off and this is why I said I probably could only apply the um, base gel to the bottom third because I went and applied it again to the entirety of that whole thing I sculpted because I'm going to be applying the builder gel over it. Acrylic, builder gel, um, poly gel, dipping, all those products have similar polymer bases. So in general, it's okay for you to experiment <laughs> with applying those products layered and over each other and things like that now there's so much science that goes into it but it, there's it's not going to be the end of the world because you applied acrylic on builder gel builder gel on poly gel and all that so 
it's not gonna be the end of the world. Definitely try it, see how it holds up, see if it, you know, keeps its structure, its integrity, everything like that. But it's worth the try. So this is the brush I use. I think I got it from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. I get a lot of questions on it. It's real cheap. I like it. I need to buy some more. But again, it's at Michaels Hobby Lobby. And somebody commented below, and I think they said they found it at, on Amazon. So I'm gonna look on Amazon when I'm done with this. <laughs> So I'm applying that natural pink as a base. It's a thinner gel, so it's easy for me to just polish on as you're seeing right now. And applying a base gel like that, because you can just easily polish it on, it allows you to get real nice and tight around the um, cuticle area. And then I went ahead and cured that. So now we're building up a um, product that is going to be flush and real nice and tight um, to that cuticle area, almost under that epinicium, because we're not dealing with a bulk of product at once. So Builder Gel has so many benefits. I love it so much because you can get just such such the cleanest looks, and I I love it. I love acrylic too. I just I like nails. Okay, <laughs> so I'm applying another layer of that cosmetic pink builder and I applied a thin layer and cured that as well um, I didn't want to go in and build it up immediately because the nails were filed down pretty thin and I want to make sure it cured properly so now I'm going in with another layer of that cosmetic pink and I brushed it on and this time it was just for slip layer purposes and um, if you not heard if you haven't heard me speak about a slip layer before a slip layer is a layer you apply and you don't cure and then you apply the bulk of the product over that so what that layer does you can see I'm applying it now it helps when you get that big bead or bulk of product for it to know where to go so you're like laying out guidelines like this is where I want you to be this is how close to the cuticle I want you to be. This is how close to the edge I want you to be. And this is everywhere I want you to go. So now you can see me taking this big bead and it's just flowing. Even though this is a thicker gel, it's still just leveling out in the places that I put that slip layer. So it's a guide. It's like, hey, big bead, just come over here. Now, if you put an excess, excess of product or you have a super, super runny gel that you also apply to excess of product, yes, it can overflow to the cuticles. Or if your client doesn't hold their hand in light properly, gravity does still exist. But in general, for, you know, in perfect situations, when that doesn't happen, a slip layer is what you want to do <laughs> just take my word for it and it makes it so much easier especially again this is actually a very very thick gel um this is sped up so it seems you know a little more easier to work with but if you have a gel that's a little bit thinner than this a slip layer is going to be even more perfect and um, i don't ever really show it and i probably will in the future but when you have a gel um that is a little bit on the runny side um, even this one it's a little thick so it doesn't move as fast but you can flip the clients or your hand over and um, so that the um, your nail is facing like the ground or their nails facing the ground and it'll build an apex for you because it'll gravity will pull it down you flip it back upright put it in the light you get you a nice apex you see I'm flipping her hand now filing it that's how you can hold that gel anyways you know something to think about tip for another day so i have already filed her nails into shape sorry didn't add that clip but i filed them into shape and now i'm using my cross cut bit to um finish file the surface and i only use my cross cut bit on gel and i explained this before it's because gel is so so soft so using a carbide bead carbide bit that actually cuts into the nail with those flutes can be way 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 too harsh so this bit simply files away product it levels very nicely again this is thicker you can actually find gels that are a bit thinner um, if you're looking in the light elegance line the extreme gel or the cool gel 
Um, the one step is pretty runny. So if you're a beginner, that might not be the most ideal. I say extreme is a good way to go. This is builder. So it's their thickest. Um, but gel levels out so easy. You don't even have much filing to do. It's so soft. You can file it so easily. It's so good on the hands. So if you're somebody who's having trouble with your hands, it's perfect for that. Um, there's not much work. And with this cross cut bit, again, it's a diamond bit. So it's basically like a sanding band, except it's metal. So not only am I filing the nail into shape, the surface into shape, I'm actually getting a nice buff surface. So after I do this step, I just use my hand file to make sure that my shape is nice and my corners are sharp and my points are there and then I'm good to go. So I've dusted the nails off, cleaned them off. I don't introduce water into my services, so I just dust everything off. And so you can take a look at the colors I'm using. I've been really, really enjoying the um, Vetro Gold Line products. Um, this is, I think it's called the Sugar Stacker from Wildflowers, and I'm using the top color that I'm pointing to. It's a gold um, pigment. I'm using the Gel 2 No Cleanse, and I use this for my chrome um, products. I'm using the Lac Matte Top Coat, and I'm going to be using this color to mix with that um, first yellow, just on the snakeskin ones to kind of saturate that color a little bit, make it a little bit, you know, more vibrant. And I'm using the clear rubber top coat for the little water droplets on the snake skin. So this is just simple polishing. I wanted to add it because a lot of people like it actually. So I am always working to get as close to the cuticle area as possible and get a nice clean polish. It is so, so very important that you get a clean polish, guys. That's really something that can set your work apart. And if you're a beginner, just please, please work on that and get that right. Because people notice that and clients notice that. And it may be something they can't put their finger on, but they're like, their work's just, it's just not clean. And that can be, you know, the issue or the difference. It's nothing like seeing that beautiful cuticle area. So that's just a, a tip from, from me to you. <laughs> um, if you're a nail tech starting out, if you're just somebody who do who does nails on um, their own hands, um, that's just something to pay attention to. And if you wanna get a little like thin, like French brush and get some acetone or some alcohol and go around that cuticle area to clean it up, clean the gel polish up before you um put it in the light if that'll help you out that's great I try to get it nice right now because it takes so much more time to do that but um definitely don't leave that cuticle area all raggedy and jagged with polish please don't so um when I polish the nails um, this is a perfect time to tell you guys I um don't always um, cap the tip, and I know that goes against everything you've ever learned, but um, the first layer, I just polish the surface of the nail, and usually most gels are two layers. The second layer, sometimes I'll lightly cap the tip, sometimes I don't, especially if I'm going with chrome. I might not want to do that because that'll bulk up real easily. That's four or five layers of stuff you have to put on, so... Um, that's just a tip in order to keep your shape. But don't forget, you can always go in, and I'll show you actually later in this video, um, regain your shape with your hand file. So this is the hand that's going to have the chrome. I put two coats of the polish, and I'm going in with that gel to no wipe or no cleanse, whatever, top coat. And I use this for all my chrome product products. I don't like it as a regular top coat because it does have that rubbery feeling, which is perfect for chrome. I just don't like how it feels and clients sometimes notice it, don't like it either. So I cure that um, between 45, no more than 60 seconds, or you'll get too much of a cure and it won't be as rubbery, but don't under cure it because it'll be cloudy. So between 45 to 60 seconds, and that's LED. Um, I don't have UV, so I'm sorry, I can't give you the time for that, but just a little bit less than what it recommends for UV. So as you've seen, I took a latex sponge, I just get those from Sally's, and I burnished that pigment into the nail. 
dust it off really well. And now I'm going in again with that gel to top coat and top coating. And then after I top coat, you can see right now with the hand file, I'm regaining my shape. Now you don't wanna file the polish completely off. On the tips, I do, I don't care about the tips, they can be blank. No clients really complain about that, but if your client does, then don't do it. But I've only had one client ever say anything about that. Anyways, um, so I'm going in as my final top coat after I regain the shape. I'm going in with that Joya Mia top coat as my final top coat. So always double top coat your chrome. That's how you're going to get longevity. So on to the next hand. Oh, did you stay tuned? You see how much this set costs? So at the end, you'll get some more good information and you'll see how I got that price. So anyways, <laughs> I'm mixing that yellow with that darker color. And this again is only just to get it a little more vibrant, a little more saturated to help it kind of stand out against that white. I personally would like to recreate this, but in a different color that's a little more contrasting with the white but a yellow boa constrictor is a thing. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not like this is unnatural or anything, but I am just taking this um, little fine, it's the uh, Wildflowers Magenta brush. And the technique I'm using this, just to keep it real organic, I'm kind of like stippling. Um, I'm not really doing like sharp lines. And this is super, super sped up. And it may be kind of hard to tell at this moment, but I'm really just kind of pushing that product in these general shapes. And um, I always like to recommend to you guys that you, when you're doing something that's natural or found in nature, marble, quartz, fire, water, snake, alligator, cheetah, go onto Google and type it, type it in and see how it naturally looks and see what gives it its look, what makes it look the way that it does, and get those little features and add them into what you're doing. Instead of looking at somebody else's set, look at how that item looks naturally or you know how it just really, really looks, and then mimic those properties. And that's just the best advice I can give you and um trying to get that you know real looking marble or whatever it may be so that's what i actually did and um so i looked at a real picture of a yellow boa constrictor and found out you know what makes it look the way it does and kind of tried to mimic that so you can see i'm taking this brush again i'm kind of stippling in these shapes so they're not really like geometric straight line diamond shape they're just kind of frayed at the edges but you can kind of see a little diamond shape so i um in between i'm periodically flash curing this so i don't mess it up so just whenever i feel i'm just like throw it in the light for a few seconds okay take it out so i'm taking the brush really really dry with product and i'm literally again stippling in between that white and that yellow just to again mimic how it naturally looks on the snake and just to get that texture and that look and adding some you know dots here of some more yellow and everything like that so again that, that's all the little details i'm adding in and i do wish this was a different color so you can tell a little more because it actually looks really really cute but it's kind of hard to tell so I'm going in with that lac matte top coat and top coating that. And I decided I would, you know, go ahead and put um, the second nail in for you guys to see. And you can see I'm kind of measuring out where I want to put these um, little blobs. And I decided I wanted this print to go at an angle. I thought that would be a little bit different and unique. And after I did this one, I kind of wish I did the pinky at an angle too, but it's it's okay <laughs> and you know as i discuss like different things i wish i could have changed with this or how i personally would have liked it um it's just a lesson on you know just making sure that your client's happy i do think these nails are super cute and she absolutely loved them and it's what she wanted 
And so that makes them perfect in the end. So if your client is happy and you use good product and you did a good job and you did your best, they're they're perfect. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you're starting out, if your client likes them, if they, they paid for them and they, they're going to come back to you, then you did a good job. Um, so it's, you know, artwork can be translated in so many different ways. So, you know, just experiment, try things out, see a picture and do it a little different, change the colors, change the angles and everything like that. Start a new trend, you know, <laughs> do that. Throw some drips on a nail. Start, start a trend. <laughs> um, I did not start that at all, but it is everywhere, <laughs> uh, which is surprising. That That's something while I'm doing this design. And I am amazed sometimes with the designs that I post that'll, you know, kind of take off. I'm like, oh, you know, these are cute and post them. And then it's like a billion views, not literally. But then there's some, I'm like, oh my God, these are fire. These are going, these Oh, these are going up to the White House. And then it's like 17 likes, no comments, nothing. <laughs> so, you know, beauty is definitely in the eye of the beholder. And sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> but anyway, so I um, applied the matte top coat, cured it. That lack matte top coat cures 90 seconds in LED and it doesn't cure in all LED lights. So make sure you look that up. They sell it on Skyline Beauty Supply and see what lamps it's not compatible with. So I just took some of that clear rubber top coat. It's very, very, very thick, but it stays shiny. It's very thick like a builder, but it's a soft gel that can be soaked off. And so I'm just taking it, taking it, and I'm applying bigger dots or like droplets in certain areas. And then you can see some areas I'm just tapping just to, you know, be little like splatters. And I'm just doing that just to um, mimic droplets or raindrops. Again, this is something I personally would have changed. Again, my client loved it. She actually didn't realize that this was snake print at first. She just liked the droplets, the water droplets over this yellow and white pattern. And I'm like, girl, that's snake skin. She's like, oh, it is? I'm like, she's like, it sure is. And so, yeah, so this is what she wanted was the water droplets. I would like to, if I ever did this in the future, not do it yellow. And I would like to do a texture that mimics snake, actual snake skin more. That's what I would like to do. But again, they're perfect because she liked them and she paid for them. Okay. So if, again, you can use this technique like over a chrome nail, a matte nail, just whatever rubber top coat is a great product to have so now on to the bling and it's the three remaining nails on that snake hand i'm using white opal swarovski and i'm using a glue gel that i'm testing out i have been using a nailed by john her nailed by john herpes gel it's absolutely great so you can definitely use this technique with that gel um so i'm using it's like a a wax katana type tool it's not actual crystal katana and i'm setting it into that gel you want to make sure you apply a good amount of glue gel when you're doing something like this that way these stones are pressed into the gel and it's kind of going over the edge of the crystal now i like to flip the hand up because i was like i have to make sure these are in a straight line i might as well just apply them with her hand straight up and this is actually how i file my nails into shape so that's why it's hard for me to add a clip because it's hard for me to get this angle while I'm hand filing. Um, but you want to apply a generous amount of product and sink those crystals into it. Now, you don't want the gel on top of the crystal, but up the sides, definitely. So I'm taking a gel brush and I'm feathering out that product because you don't want a line of demarcation of where that gel is built up and thick. But I'm not wiping it from the actual sides of the crystals. I'm just feathering the product out. So it's still built up, up and around the edges of those crystals. But again, we want it to feather it out so there's not a harsh look. So I'm taking my Joya Mia top coat, my shiny top coat or whatever you're using, and I'm going around these crystals. I'm doing this because I'm going to make these nails 
matte. If I wasn't going to make them matte, I would go ahead and top coat in the um, shiny gel. I still go around it the same, but I top coat the whole nail in the shiny gel. So I'm going around the crystals and in between the crystals with the shiny gel. And this is so that I get a nice sealed in crystal, um, especially in between the actual crystals without um, having a frosted look on top and in between them that looks a mess. So I'm using, I decided to go with the um, velvet matte from um, Daily Charm instead of the lact because this is a no wipe and it's a little bit easier to work with with crystals to me to use a no wipe matte top coat. And it's actually a really good um, matte gel top coat. So you can see I'm just going around the perimeter of the crystals but not in between them because they're shiny in between and um, they're already sealed in. So I'm just going again around the perimeter in the tip and making sure I get as close as possible without actually going on top of the crystals. That's so important. So again, with this detail brush, I'm going around the crystals with that matte top coat, but not in between them and not on top of them. You, if, they're, if they weren't touching, I would go in between them, but because they're touching, I wouldn't go in between them. I do go in between them with the shiny top coat to seal them in to make sure hair doesn't snag in between them. So that's just the rundown on that and I hope it makes sense and I hope it helps. So you can see what that looks like once it's cured. Doesn't it look so good? Great. So we repeat that and that's it. That's our entire look. So I get a lot of questions on how I moisturize my client's hands. So when you're using a cuticle oil, don't use anything with petroleum or mineral oil. That will cause lifting. Tell your clients don't use a cuticle oil with petroleum or mineral oil. They can use natural oils all day long. Um, so once I apply the cuticle oil um, at the cuticle area, I just drop it. I love to use this OPI moisturizing spray. This takes the place for lotion for me. It's very thin. Again, it's a spray. It's just moisturizing. You don't have that thick lotion that's getting on your crystals and your crevices, everything like that. But it moisturizes the hand because a lot of clients are self-conscious about how their knuckles and in between their fingers looks. So that kills all that ash, but it doesn't have that thickness that lotion does. And now I go in with acetone and lint-free wipe and I wipe off the nails because oil, you wouldn't think it does, but it makes the nails dull. You think it make it shiny, but it makes it dull. So acetone, acetone <laughs> perfectly gets that oil off and that moisturizing spray. Um, and just to quickly again talk about the cuticle oil, when I say natural oils like nut oils like almond and things like that, or avocado oils, um, coconut oils, grapeseed oils, things like that that are found in nature. But petroleum is found in nature and mineral oil, but you don't want those. But any of the other like natural oils like that, fruit, nut, plant oils are perfect. Make your own. OPI has good ones. CND has a good one. Um, Famous Nails has a great one. So again, I am using that acetone on that wipe to cleanse the nails and it's absolutely perfect for matte nails. You see, I used that oil and made it shiny. You see how it's shiny? So I'm gonna go in with this wipe and that acetone and you see how it's perfectly matte again. And it actually helps sparkle up the crystals also. So um, you can see how perfect it looks now. And um, it's hard to tell the sparkle on these because they're opal, but they're as sparkly as they're going to get. But especially if you have any other of the very sparkly crystals, you're going to regain all your sparkle back so you can take those bomb videos and pictures at the end. So you can see how good my matte looks. And on my um, nails with the snake skin, the matte is back matte. And them shiny droplets are back shiny. And we're good to go. We're ready to take our final pictures. So I hope you enjoy this very long, hopefully very informative, talkative video. But guess what? I'm not done yet because now you're here. You want to know how I got this price. So if you're interested in how I tally up my prices... 
I have a pricing guide that I use that I created and I've printed it out, laminated it and bound it. I actually do sell everything that's in this booklet. It's for $35. All you have to do is email me at this address right here and um, just in the subject line put pricing guide and I'll give you instructions on how to get the soft copies of this guide. That means you're only going to be getting the documents in Excel and Microsoft Word. You can edit them how you feel. You can add beautiful colors, everything like that. It does not come with this cover sheet. You can make your own little cover sheet if you wanna make it a booklet. You don't have to, or you can print these pages out big and hang them on your wall. It has things such as appointment reminders, information about, you know, cancellation policies, tardiness, food, and everything like that. Feel free to type whatever you want to or use this as a guideline, change the amounts, the time, whatever you want to edit and change. You can change the fonts, add some cute little pictures, a border, whatever you want to do, and however you want to display it. Or if you just want to have this just to email to clients when you obtain them, you can definitely do that. I also have information about client courtesy, about them running their fingers through their hair and things like that. Print this out on a big old poster board at your Kinko's, FedEx, whatever, and put it on your wall. Um, but here's the good stuff that you've been waiting for. This is the pricing. So I have everything on enhancements. Again, if you want this, um, you are free to edit all these items, delete these lines out change this price to whatever you want to change it to of course you know take this out put your business name whatever and um so this has all my different pricing again put your own pricing or if you want to use this pricing as a guideline absolutely you can i'm not saying you need to charge this much you could charge more charge less that's a whole nother conversation so it just has, you know, natural nail services, removal service, Swarovski designs, and, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you can, you can change these sections however you want to change them. And then I have just regular design add-ons, artwork, and everything like that. And then lastly, I have a page on keys to longer lasting nails. This is just tips and stuff to help you and your clients, you know, better understand how to make their nails last longer. Because if you haven't noticed, I like for my nails to last long and my clients' nails to last long as well. <laughs> so again, however you want to do this, you can. So now for the information you actually want to know, how much I charge for this set. I have my little marker out just, you know, so we can all follow along. So for a builder gel refill, I charge 45 and I did a repair on a nail. I did an actual file down and everything, but I'm not gonna charge for that. We'll just do the 45 for the refill, the seven for the builder gel single nail repair. And then I charge a dollar extra for stiletto nails per nail. So she had four of them, two on each hand. So we're doing 45 plus seven plus an extra four. So that would go ahead and give us 56. Okay, so now for the add-ons in art. For gel polish, I charge a dollar per nail. So that's 10 nails polished. And then for the snake print design, it is $5 per nail. She got two nails with that design. So that's $10. And then for the chrome burnishing, that's a dollar a nail. One hand had all five with the burnishing. Okay, so if we add that up, that's $81. And let's go to our Swarovski page. So for the Swarovski, she had three crystals on three nails. That's $2 a nail. So that's six. And that gives us a total of 87. So this is what I charge to compensate me for my time, my skill, and my ability to execute these different and trendy designs. Each thing you do extra takes extra time, so I'm a big believer that you should get paid more for it. Now, doing something like not charging her 
extra for doing the little file down to switch it over to builder gel i actually made that decision just things like that you're absolutely free to run your business how you want to but please don't ever sell yourself short no matter if you feel like you can charge these prices or you need to charge more just do not sell yourself short so if you're wanting to get this booklet again please email me at top of the nails at gmail.com again it's 35 dollars to receive all four of these documents if you want to print it out like i have it i got it at like office depot you um tell them to laminate all the pages and then bind them mine actually broke a little bit but it's okay all right guys and thank you for watching comment down below if you have any questions just want to talk chat ask other people questions don't forget to like and subscribe of course turn on the notification so you'll know when i post all right you guys bye thanks